Welcome. A physics course has specific learning objectives a student must meet in order to earn a good grade. I enjoy working with students inside and outside of class to help them meet course goals. Sometimes this can lead to a misconception, often subconscious, that one might call the fantasy of the soft-hearted professor, meaning that a good grade in the course will be based on a good relationship with one's instructor. However, in a physics course you need to continue to remind yourself that your course grade will be dependent on an objective measurement of your performance on graded events. I'm Dr. Courtney. In this problem we're going to use the definition of work to find out how much work it takes to stretch a spring. The big idea here is that the work varies because as the spring gets stretched more it takes more force to stretch it. Now not all springs are the same. You might think of a slinky which is very easy to stretch or the spring in a car suspension which requires much more force to stretch a smaller distance. Springs are characterized by what's called the spring constant and the variable or the uh, symbol K is often used to denote that property. This type of problem is a bit different from computing the work required when a constant force is applied over a distance to an object. So let's make a note here that we are dealing with a variable force. As we develop this problem, we'll start with a sketch of each scenario that is described. In the first scenario, we have a spring that's not stretched at all. That's called being at the equilibrium position. So we'll call that x equals zero. We're asked how much work it takes to stretch that spring 10 centimeters. In the second case, the spring is already starting stretched. So it's already stretched out to 10 centimeters. And we are asked how much work it takes to stretch it out to 20 centimeters. We are given a spring constant K of 220 newtons per meter, meaning it takes 220 newtons of force to stretch this particular spring one meter. As we make a plan for evaluating, we will first check our units, and then we will go ahead and begin working with the expression of work. So we want to express work in terms of force and distance. But remember here that our force is variable. So that is an integral expression of work. We also are not given the force, but we are given enough information to compute that force. So we want to express the force in the spring in terms of the spring constant and the distance. Then we can sub into our first equation. Then we'll be equipped to go ahead and compute the integral for work. And so far this applies to the problem in general. Then we're given some specific conditions that we will be ready to evaluate. So we'll, we will evaluate the integral for work a for x from 0 to 10 centimeters and when x or the distance that this spring is stretched goes from 10 centimeters to 20 centimeters. And before we decide we're done, we want to consider how many significant figures our answer should have. So the quantities that we've been given are in centimeters, which are not MKS units. So let's make a note that that is equal to zero, 10 centimeters is 0 0.1 meters. 20 centimeters 
is 0 0.2 meters. Those are the values we will actually use when it comes time to substitute. Now let's express work in terms of force and distance. When the force is variable, that means it's varying over each increment of distance. So we have the integral of the force times each increment of distance, and we will evaluate it from our first position to our final position. Now in this case, the force required to stretch a spring can be expressed as the spring constant times that displacement. So we will substitute that into our integral for work as kx for the force, still dx. Now we can go ahead and compute the integral. The k is a constant. It is not a variable. It is not affected by dx. It is as if it were a number and you could bring it right out in front of the integral. So that is equal to k. Now the integral of x is 1 half x squared. So we have a 1 half x squared. This is a definite integral. It's evaluated from an initial position to a final position. So we express that this way. This is the solution, but it's a general expression for the solution. So now we're ready to consider the specific conditions we've been given. In part A, the work will be equal to 1 half times our spring constant, which was 220 newtons per meter, times x squared, where x squared will go from 0, where we start, to 0 0.1 meters. So we can simplify this first term a little bit to 110 newtons per meter times we evaluate from the final position and subtract the initial position. So we have 0 0.1 meters squared minus 0 meters squared. Now obviously that second term is 0, but I include it for completion because that's not always the case. And it won't be the case in part B. So we compute this carefully and we find that the work is 1.1 newton meters, and a newton meter is the same thing as a joule. In part B, we have 1 half times the same spring constant, because it's a characteristic of the spring itself, times x squared, where this time we are beginning at 0.1 meters and going to 0.2 meters. So we have the work is 110 newtons per meter. This time we start with 0 0.2 meters squared minus 0 0.1 meters squared. And computing that carefully, we have an answer of 3.3 newton meters, or 3.3 joules, is required to stretch the spring from 10 to 20 centimeters. Now these have two significant figures, and our answers have, well the spring constant has two, but each of our distances has only one significant figure. So let's report our answer to one significant figure. Part A, it takes one newton meter of work to stretch the spring from zero to ten centimeters. And it takes three newton meters of work to stretch the spring from 10 to 20 centimeters. Let's take a moment to consider whether this makes sense. First of all, let's look at our units. When we substituted specific values, we have newtons per meter associated with the spring constant and meters squared associated with the distance. So the meters in the denominator cancels with one term of meters here in the numerator, so we are left with newtons times meters for our expression of work, which is what we would expect. So those units make sense and suggest that we probably didn't forget anything didn't forget to convert, didn't forget to substitute a certain value we needed. Now let's consider the magnitude of the work required. If you don't have a physical sense of whether that number is appropriate, let's 
compare the two answers and see whether that helps us gain confidence. In the second case, we're stretching the same distance, 10 centimeters in each case. However, it is harder, it takes more force to stretch from 10 to 20 than from 0 to 10 centimeters because the force is a multiplication of the spring constant times the distance that you're stretching. So we would expect then that uh, the force required in part B would be greater than the force in part A and specifically that the work required in part B would be more than the work required in part A. So, so we expect the work for B to be greater than for A. And that is what we find. It's not the same. And uh, given our distances, the next thing we can do is to do a quick check of our math to make sure that the magnitude makes sense. When we substitute, we want to make sure we don't forget to square the distance and that we perform correct order of operations. And between the units and checking the relative magnitudes and double checking our calculations, we have confidence that we have the right answer.